Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I created this bi-directional scrolling text effect. So stay tuned. So we're going to start off by creating a video workspace. So I'm going to go to video and I'm going to place a blank video design on my workspace. And um, this side panel gets really, really annoying. Don't know why it's doing that. But anyhow, um, I'm going to go into my recent pictures. And this is the photo that I'm going to place on my workspace. I'm just going to close this so that we can see the full screen. Now, uh, I know I ramble on a lot. I'm sorry. I really do like for you guys to understand what I'm doing. So my videos might be a little bit longer than some other people's, but um, I just want you to understand what it is that I'm doing and where the items are located on the screen. Now I am using the new editor. I'm going to click on this photo and I'm going to right click and set this image as my background. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to place some text on my workspace. And uh, in this text box, I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in there scrolling text. And I'm just going to close that. That way we can see the full screen. Now I want this text to be uh, all uppercase. So I'm just going to come up here to this small a and large a and I'm going to click it and that's going to make my text all caps. Now I'm going to go into my fonts that's on my floating menu. Now this bar will not appear unless you are clicking on a text box. When you click on the workspace, you're not going to get the option to modify the text. It's only when you're clicking on a text box. So I'm going to come in here in the font uh, area and on my right side, that's where all the fonts will show. I want to use Anton, so I'm going to select Anton. And I'm just going to make this a little bit larger. And I'm going to try and place it in the middle of my screen. So I know that it's in the middle when I see the line horizontally. Okay, and there's the line horizontally and vertically. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of this text to a bright yellow. So I'll come down here. I'll select this item here and I'm just going to customize it a little bit and move my color finder all the way to the top. Now I'll make a copy of my text and I'll just place it Top just so that we can see it and I'm going to go into effects and I'm going to select the hollow effect and I'm just going to decrease the thickness a little bit and now I'm going to duplicate this text and I'm going to place it right on top I'm going to duplicate it again and place that on top I'm going to duplicate it one more time and place it right on top. So now I should have five text boxes. So let's go, just wanna make sure that I do have five text boxes and sure enough, I do, bingo. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab these text boxes and we're gonna put them right on top of the one that's solid. All right, so now they're right on top. Now you can check the position to make sure that they're on top by seeing that the solid one is on the bottom and then all the other ones that are outlines are on top. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna take a copy of this whole slide. So we'll just uh, duplicate this. So we can come over here and we can say duplicate page and there is the second page. Now, if you don't see this panel, all you have to do is come right here to scroll view and you can click it. I have it turned off right now, in which case the slides are appearing one on top of another. But if I click it again, I'll see them right next to each other. And this is called 
scroll view. I like to call it slide preview, but you know, I'm not the boss of Canva. So uh, this is my second slide. And what we're going to do now is we are going to grab two of those hollow text boxes and we'll put two on the bottom and we'll put two on top. And again, you're layering them one on top of another. So again, I'm going to duplicate this page. And on the third page, I'm going to move the final hollow text box on top. And then this one I'm going to place on the bottom. OK, now I'm going to come back to this one and I'm going to make a coffee. So I'll select Control C and I'll paste it right here. And I'll move it in front and then I'll take a copy of the, my very first one, Control C, and I'll place it over here. And I'll just move that in front. Now, I don't need this one, uh, but right now I'll need it later. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply transitions in between the pages. So I'm going to click my first transition icon and that'll open up my side panel and we're going to use match and move. And we're going to just leave that like that for now. I'll slide all the way to the bottom and I'm going to say apply between all pages. OK, so now it's applied between all pages, which is great. So the next thing that we're going to do is um, there's a lot of time in between the slides. So I'm going to decrease the timing to about two seconds. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to change this to two and I'm going to select the apply to all pages. All right. So let's take a look and see what that looks like now. All right. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And we still have that blank page. So for the blank page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into elements and I'm going to grab that photo that I used, which is this one, and I'm going to remove the background. And I'm just going to take a copy of it. And I'm going to come back to my third slide and I'm going to paste this on top. And I'm going to try and match it with the that are already on the page. Now I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. That way I have a little bit more of the photo to work with. And again, I'm just going to try and position it like that. OK, so that is perfect. And I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller, too. And now what I want to do is I want to uh, try and create an in well, you can try and create an in and out effect. Uh, so for example, we can give it like this. That way the text is appearing underneath. Or we can actually just um, crop it and make it look like one foot is underneath and the other foot is on top. And we'll do the same for page four. So uh, I'm going to now take a copy of this one since I've done all that work and come to page four and I'll just paste it on top. Control V. OK, let's take a look and see what that looks like now. And before we do, do I'm just going to delete this page because I don't need it anymore. So let's come back to the beginning and let's play and see what that looks like. Now, if you don't like the timing of the scrolling effect, maybe you feel it's too choppy, 
we can always go back in and we can play around with the timing. So all you have to do is click on those uh, diamonds in the middle or click in the middle and that will open up the transitions panel where you can um, uh, fiddle around with the timing. So sometimes it's better to just do things one slide at a time instead of coming down here and saying apply between all pages. So let's see what happens when we do click on each page individually. So we notice there's a little bit more uh, uh, timing available. So I'm going to toggle that all the way up to make it a little bit more smoother. And I'll do the same here. I'll do the same here. And I'll do the same here. And this one is um, set at 0 0.065. But if we increase the slide a little bit, we might get a little bit more uh, time duration. So um, I'm just going to bring that right up a notch. OK, and let's go back. I'm going to close this. And let's go back and let's see what that looks like. So that is a little bit more smoother and I, I do like it. Now you notice that the timing of each slide has changed slightly. So we can make them all two seconds if you like. All you have to do is just click on the timing there, change it and then apply to all pages. But when you do that, then you have to go back into the transition panel and change the timing in there because every time you change uh, the timing or the duration, you have to go back and rejig everything. And that's pretty much it. OK, that looks pretty good to me. So I hope that you learned something in this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to press that like button. And if you want to learn and get personal feedback from me, please join my memberships. I give my learners first priority feedback and help them with the projects that they're working on. So don't forget to press that join button and take a look to see what the different levels are. For now, I will say bye bye. Until next time.